that's what I said too. I told Doug, I said, hey, I, I promised a couple of them, we're going to get out of here early today, so you'll be out of here about 11 o'clock without any problem. Uh, if y'all need to leave early, just go ahead, because you can get out of here early. Okay, uh, we're still in, cha we're still in chapter 6. You know, last week we talked about uh, the, the four horses of the apocalypse, and we're in the first set of judgments on the earth. This is where the judgments, where the unsaved is going to recognize that the judgments are coming from God. And not just, you know, natural things that's happening around us, you know, that type of deal. As I was reading this week, a book called The Dragon's Prophecy by Jonathan Kahn. And anybody that's read Jonathan Kahn kind of understand, you know, he puts in perspective those things out of Scripture. And he shows how, how history is bitten into those things out of Scripture and how, how it is done. One of the things we talked about last week here, the sealed judgments. I put them up here on the board, hope you can see them. See on the judgment talks about the horses of the apocalypse, the white, the red, the black, and the, and the pale. The pale by, in Hebrew, really means green. It's used three times in Scripture, other than in Revelation where it says pale. It's always used talking about green grass. So basically the pale horse is, you know, if you will, a green color of this pale horse type deal. We know that by Scripture, these uh, seal judgments, the white was conquest, and we talked about last week, conquest of the Antichrist during that time. It's not Jesus Christ, because Jesus doesn't come back to the end of tribulation, okay? So this is more the Antichrist thing, how he's going to take over the world during these seven, seven years and all. The second one is the red one, which is the war that's going to be brought about on, on the world because of the wars and everything else. You've got the black horse, which is basically plagues and famine, which is going to cost so many people's lives. And then the last one, the pale green horse, which talks about death and Hades. Death in the year is death of people in Hades, the people that are lost, that died during this time, is going to, going to bust hell wide open. That's why it's so important that we basically uh, you know, witness these people so that they'll, they'll come to save the grace of God. This book was talked about, he talked about Palestine and, and how this related back into the four horses of the apocalypse. Palestine, we know from the very beginning of time, if you will, their primary aim and goal is to annihilate Israel, to annihilate the Jews. Remember, there was no Israel state back in that time. It was done away with so, but their whole goal was then to annihilate the Jews. Uh, the, in the end of the First World War, the, the Palestinians kind of, if you will, was recognized that, you know, this type deal is a nation, and also at the same time, the Balfour Declaration recognized the Jewish people as a nation. They didn't recognize Israel, they this type deal, they just recognized the Jewish nation, no. When the Palestinians made, uh, you know, came into being and, you know, that type deal into power, all this kind of stuff, they instituted a flag. They changed their flag a little bit, type deal. And their flag, it's, a, it's amazing how, and it got Jonathan Kahn says, it's amazing how this thing, remember the Palestinians thing, they waved this flag and they waved this flag so that they could, they can come in and annihilate Jews and kill the Jews, like what's happening right now with the Hamas, you know, sending over the rockets into Israel, on and on and on. The Palestinian flag was built on things in basically four different colors. Four different colors, just like the four horses of the apocalypse. The first color of the Palestinian flag was white, the conquest. The second color was red, which is war. The third color is black, and the fourth color is green. So this exactly fits into the four horses of the apocalypse, leading to you know, to see that the Palestinian army, the Palestinian nation, is to do trying to do exactly what's happening over here in tribulation time. Now that is that absolute and tie in for sure and everything else. That's not scriptural, okay? The scriptural says these things are going to happen and it's going to be happen, going to be done by the world itself, whether it's Palestinians or whoever the heck it may be, not the United States. But we know that it's going to happen. This has happened, and Jonathan Gunn has used that to, to show you that, you know, the, one of the major problems of the world and world, world times now and the Palestinians and what they're trying to do, you know, re directly relates to the Scripture itself. Scripture is true and accurate always, okay, and we take other things to prove that. So anyway, okay, with that, verse, let's go to chapter 6, verse 9. We talked about the first four sealed judgments. They've been broken, you know, by, the, by Christ himself. Today, beginning in verse 9, is the fifth seal. Verse 9 says, Then the, then the seven angels who the... Get you on, no. I'm on chapter 8. I'm way ahead of y'all. Okay. Y'all can't keep up. I don't know. Okay. 
chapter 6, verse 9, it says, when, the, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the soul of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. Here he is saying he is in heaven. He sees under the altar, based in heaven type deal, the souls of those that have been slain. These, these souls that have been slain, remember already that you and I, the Christian, the church and the Christians and all, we've already been raptured out. We're not under the altar anymore. We have our glorified body. We met the judgment seat of Christ, this type of deal. So therefore, the souls of those who have been slain still under the altar type deal is probably two sects of people, the Old Testament saints and the tribulation saints. Basically, the majority of this is talking about the tribulation saints. Those people that are going to be slain here in tribulation for their belief in God and standing up for God. Okay? Uh, we know that you know they, they, once the rapture happens in type deal, the tribulation saints and Old Testament saints will be will be raptured up, will raptured up, will be raised up at the end of tribulation time. That is the base of the last section of the first resurrection. First resurrection, as you read through scripture, it talks about the, those that are saved. They would be raised up into different waves, if you will, beginning to Christ himself, all the way down through the tribulation saints at the end of tribulation time. Okay? The other second, the second resurrection, if you will, is the lost people. They'd be raised up to white throne judgment after the end of the living kingdom. Okay? But these are the tribulation saints, or basically the souls of the tribulation saints, those people that have been, been crucified, those people that have been, been annihilated due, due to their stance for God during this tribulation time. Okay? Many of these people, we know many of these people are probably going to be the 144,000. And we're going to see that in, in the next chapter, chapter 7, when we get to it. These 144,000 are saved people by God, stamp of God's approval and God's protection on them to bring on Christian, bring on salvation, if you will. Bring on a worldwide wide revival. They will do that through the first half of the tribulation and basically says that Anything, any country, or any person ever tries to do against one of these 144,000, it will be done directly to them. So if somebody tries to kill one of these 144,000, they will be killed. Not the, not the 144,000, the one that's actually trying to do that. Okay? So many of these people here in the first half of the tribulation, they will be actually, protection will be withdrawn from them, and many of them will be more martyred and killed. So a lot of these people is, is probably the, you know, those 144,000. Remember also, in this, the, as they're evangelizing the, in the tribulation time, these 144,000, Holy, Holy Spirit is alive and well. He is here, okay? He is here still doing the things that he, was, he has been doing all the way after Christ sent him at Pentecost. He is still here. Only one part of the Holy Spirit is taken out, if you will, basically prior to tribulation time and the time around the rapture, and that part is the part of the Holy Spirit which is restraining evil. Restraining evil is taken out of the, out of the, the attributes of the Holy Spirit so the Antichrist and so Satan himself during these seven years can go about doing whatever the you know, Lord is going to let them do during these seven years to bring judgment on the world. Okay? But the Holy Spirit is still here saving people. There's going to be a lot of people saved. You think about, you read the Left Behind series, the type deal, when rapture happened, what happened to all those other people sitting in rooms like this that they're, they're still here? Uh, how did I miss it? Okay. And so many of them bent their knee at that point in time and will, will throughout the tribulation time to get saved. Many of those people thought they were saved because they came to church, because they've been good people, because my mom and dad were saved, and on and on and on found out that they were not saved, so therefore they were left behind. They're still here during tribulation time, okay? That's the people, many of these, these will be basically martyred during tribulation because they will be saved, and therefore as they're, they're saved, you know, they will be executed for their beliefs in many other things. Who is persecuting during this time? Who's bringing on this, this judgment on the world? They, during tribulation time, the judgment is brought on by ecclesiastical Babylon. We look at that in chapter 17 when we get there, okay? Ecclesiastical Babylon is that religious order that is permeated during tribulation time that basically, if you will, it, it focuses on uh, paganization of religion and that they, people will start to worship men instead of God himself. There is, they will, they, they will turn completely away from God. 
completely entirely away from God. Okay? Even as we see the ends here of this chapter 6, even we see these in here, even though here in this judgment time, and you know, these bringing about the stars are falling from the sky and the sun's being blocked out, and all these things are the sixth judgment type deal, sixth seal of judgment, all these things, people recognize this is coming from God, but it does not say anywhere in Scripture that these people will bend the knee and be saved. Even though the devastation is up, they are, they will be clouded. Their thoughts will be crowded. Their, their knowledge will be skewed to the point where they know God is bringing judgment on them, but they will not give themselves over to accepting God as, as Christ and Savior. Okay? So verse 9, where it talks about these are the people that's under the altar that he's talking to here. Verse 10 says, they called out in a loud voice. They is those people under the altar. They called out in, in a loud voice. How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? So basically they're calling out to, to Jesus saying, how long must this go on? How long before we will receive the blessings we have, you have for those, even those in rapture? Okay? How long are we going to wait? It's kind of amazing, just like all of us today. We want everything when? Yesterday. Not tomorrow. I think this is the same thing that they're here and here. How long will we are able to be a part of your kingdom and have our glorified bodies and, you know, so forth and so on? Verse 11, Christ answers that. And, you know, the question that he asked is like if we ask questions, God will bring those things to us. Verse 11 says, then each of them was, whoops. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Yeah. Then each of them was given a white robe and they were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were in to be killed as they had been, uh, as they should have been, to be bring to completion. Basically, he is saying to him, Christ tells them, "Hold on, time is not yet. Time is not yet. This is probably somewhere mid tribulation time, after about three and a half years." So he is saying to them, "It's not completed yet. We got another three and a half years to go, and then tribulation will be done. And that's when Christ will rule and reign." And then it will be over. The second resurrection will come about. All these tribulation saints will be raised up and given their glorified bodies. Okay? All these things are to happen. But Christ says, not yet. Hold on. Wait a little while. Great lesson for us today. Many times we pray, Lord, heal me. We don't want it tomorrow. We want it yesterday. Okay? Same thing he is telling them applies to our lives today. We pray to God and then we give it to Him. Lord, in His will and His timing, will take care of all things. For all those that love the Lord, all, the, all of us as Christians, Lord has us in His hands. He may not save you from physical death here on this earth. If He doesn't save you from physical death, hallelujah for you. <laughs> You're in a better place than all the rest of us that are still here. Okay? We have grief and all this kind of stuff. We don't look forward to that. We don't try to bring that on. But the same thing, understand, those people that we no longer have around us, those loved ones, are already in heaven waiting on me and you. What a beautiful, beautiful picture that is. <clears throat> verse, verse, verse 12. Verse 12 says, I watched as he opened the sixth seal. So at the end of the fifth seal. Now we enter the sixth seal. It says, I watched as he opened the sixth seal. This is, this is Jesus himself. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat, goat hair, and the whole moon turned blood red. So basically, this is the beginning. The sixth seal brings on the second back, uh, blackout of the tribulation time. First blackout has already been experienced. Now, prior to tribulation, prior to the beginning, or right at the beginning of tribulation time, you know, the seven-year covenant sign. That was the first blackout. Here's the second blackout. And he has said, said here, there's a great earthquake. Many times in Scripture, most times in Scripture, when, when God brings judgment on the earth, He starts it with an earthquake. I think that's to, you know, probably get our attention. If you've never been to an earthquake, a small one will get your attention. I can't imagine what a big one would be. <laughs> Carol and I lived in California, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, Craig and Oga and them experienced the same thing. You know, sometimes you just start, you stand there and you kind of shake your and going, I'm not dancing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, things start falling off the walls. Glasses start coming. You say, oh, me. Okay? Because you have no way to control it. You don't want to run inside or run outside. Okay? 
But he brings on the earthquakes. He brings on these things to, to draw attention. These things to show that this is the judgment of God. And throughout Scripture, he uses earthquakes to do that. I was reading one, th one of the historians type deal and it says, says basically since uh, time was starting and they started keeping record and all, there's been, been some, I think it's 4,000 4, earthquakes. And out of those 4,000 earthquakes that they kept records of, some 13 million people have died in the earthquake. So this is a great picture of judgment being brought on the world. Now, is there, these 13 million people that's going to die, are they all the lost? Mm -mm. They're the lost and the saved. Because when God, God brings on his judgment here on earth, we're part of that judgment he brings on to us many times. And therefore, we're, we're because of, of who we are. Remember, even though you and I are saved people, you and I are still who? Sinners. Because we still have a sin nature in us. We are still committing sin in our lives until we've made perfect after the rapture or after your death and you've gone to heaven and given your glorified body. Okay? <clears throat> so basically the sixth seal here. Uh, the second blackout. And now I look at this and, you know, talking about blackouts, many of the places I read as I go through commentaries and everything else, many times we think of that blackout as just pitch black. I don't think that's true. I don't think as things I read and things I look at and, you know, things that happen during this blackout period, I think me and you in some ways have experienced a small part of that blackout stage in our lives. You remember the eclipse you saw here about what? I don't know, six months, a year ago, or whatever the eclipse came. You know, many of you, like me, probably were sitting outside and watching this eclipse happen, and it's just bright sunshine. And then you see a little bit of the sun go away, and it's still bright sunshine. As it came across and almost came to full eclipse, all of a sudden, instead of bright sunshine, you're going to dusky time, almost to nighttime. But you still could see someone. It does not say he completely blacked out the entire life. It just says he blacked out to, so that he could bring judgment on the world and people would understand that it's coming. I can imagine, I, you know, when I was sitting there and it got real dark, I'm going, this is a mess. Okay? Imagine what these people are going to say when it starts getting black. And they, earthquakes are already coming. Now the sun's going away and the light's going away. He's kind of going, oh, me, this is a mess. Okay? But he's saying he's going to bring on this blackout in this type of deal and convulsions of the earth, of the earthquakes in hell. Okay? Verse 13. You don't know it takes me a minute to find where the heck I am. 13. And the stars in the sky fell to the earth as, as late figs dropped from the fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. Basically, it's talking about here the stars in the sky after the earthquake, meteor showers, where the stars came down from, from the sky, where just like, the, just like the angels were falling, the stars are coming down from the sky, showing that God has a power, has a power over nature itself. Not only over life and death of me and you, but over nature itself, where the stars even fall from the sky. I put, pull up Matt on Mark 13, 24 and 25, it says, but in those days following the distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give, give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. This is devastation. This is God's judgment on, on the world. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 14 says, The sky re receded like a scroll, rolling up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. You know, there's several scriptures to, you know, from Nahum and on back in the other Old Testament time talks about this period of time where the, where the mountains are just leveled because of the earthquakes that's happened, because of the judgment brought on, brought on the earth, okay? Verse 15 says, Then the kings of the earth, the princes and the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. Here it is saying that basically all of the unsaved finally come to realize this is judgment brought on the earth. This is judgment brought on sin of the earth. And they're trying to hide from this sin, hide from this judgment. And they're doing so by hiding in the caves and all these other places to get away from the wrath of God. Impossible. I don't care what you do. Many of us not think about it. Many people out there think if they do sin in the dark or sin by themselves, sin is hidden. Sin is not hidden from the eyes of God. Whenever, wherever it is, whatever you do, okay, 
Same thing said here. They're trying to escape, escape wrath of God. They're trying to escape the judgment which they're due. It says that, you know, God will not solve that. Wherever you hide, God still finds you. Okay? Verse 16 and 17 completes this chapter. It says, They call to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us. You know, imagine the judgment is so great right now, the earthquake's going off and the darkness and everything is happening and the mountains are falling down and on and on and on. The people are praying. I don't know who they're praying to, but they're the, they're the, they're the lost, most of People are praying, rocks fall on us and kill us because we want out of here. Okay? So they call to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their, their wrath has come, and who can stand? Basically, unbelievers at this point have recognized this is the judgment of God. All the way up to the sixth judgment, all the way to where we're here now, where the earthquakes come and the stars start falling in the sky, they had taken all these other things that they saw in these other sealed judgments, and they had put those all into nature, the natural things. They said, oh, that's just wars. We've had wars since forever, okay? Oh, that's just famine. We've had famines forever. It's like when the famines and all was brought on the, on the Egyptians when their children wanted to come out. On and on and on. So they gave all of these things to natural things. So we get down to number six. And number six, the sixth seal of judgment, when it is opened up, they recognize this is not natural. This is greater than what's natural. This is greater than anything that nature will bring on. This will be God himself judging the world. Okay? And as we do that, we understand that, you know, that during this time that, you know, these people, many of them, I think many of them probably will be saved. You're some of the more of those that saved during, during this time period and whatever else. But many of them still, many, many, many of them still, even though they recognize this is judgment of God on sin and on the world, they still refuse to be saved. Still refuse to be saved. And therefore they go to the last part, death and Hades, they go to hell for eternity because of their lack of submitting to God's will in their life. The seventh seal judgment, we don't, we don't cover you know, here because we know the seventh seal judgment leads into the seven trumpet judgments, okay, type deal. So we'll look at that as we get down through there as it leads in. We start picking up on the trumpet judgments to start those. And I guess in Berg chapter somewhere. To the right. Prior to 22. Okay. We get that. Okay. I promise you to do that. Okay. Any questions? Mark, yes, ma'am. Is there anything to indicate the time span between each of the seals? No. Are... There's no time frame. Matter of fact, if everything you read and you read through scripture and everything else, you know, all these things are happening, you know, type deal. And and they it just it doesn't say that this, that all these earthquakes and convulsions and and death is coming on the people, start and actually you know, to the sixth judgment. They all this all this judgment on the earth may start way up here. Okay? And come all the way down to the sixth judgments. Okay? So this is not the not the the sixth judgment is not the beginning point of judgment on the earth. It is the I, I always say the culmination of the sixth judgment type deal is the beginning of this section, this phase. Okay? So no, there's not it, there's not there's no chronological order to these things. Okay? Yes, sir, go ahead. But, but it will be in a three and a half year span. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, this, this part will be a three and a half year span. Remember, then it gets to mid-tribulation. Mid-tribulation, the Antichrist comes in. This three and a half years that we're talking about here where all these things are happening, these civil judgments happen, these people are getting martyred and everything else, is the good times. This is peace and security. This is what everybody wants. Three and a half year points, the Antichrist finally says, enough, I'm God. You will worship me. And now, the last three and a half years is what many people call, and I call the Great Tribulation. Now, if you will, all hope is gone. Because, they, because it is now the great time when the Antichrist is going to rule and reign. He was setting himself up to be God. He would put his, put his statue or his his. I guess, symbolism type deal on the temple itself, stop the sacrifice, and then on and on and on and on. Okay? And then at the end of that second three and a half years, finally God says, enough. Second coming of Christ. 
second coming of Christ. He deals with all these things, takes care of all these things. We go from there after 75, 75 days into the millennium kingdom, thousand year reign of Christ on earth. And that is so good as that may be, so great as that thousand year reign, that is only a small part of what eternal order is going to be when we get completely out of here. When Christ comes back, new heaven, new earth, and then we're completely done. I was reading one thing that listed the things that, that this, at the end of tribulation is going to be done. No more, no more, no more. No more sickness, no more, no more health problems, no more war, no more. And the list is about this long. I said, I ain't got time to read all those. Okay, it's a church class. But no more cancer. Okay? I mean, just all those things. God has promised us down at the end that I will take care of you. Okay? No more sin in the world. Because Christ is going to rule and reign with an iron fist. Okay? Any other questions? Yes. Hold, hold a minute. Go ahead, David. Go ahead. Yes. Show them through scripture. And the only way you're going to do that is to get them right here. They have to see the word of God in their life. They have to see the word of God in mine and your life. Okay? We know that all these bad things are going to happen. We tell them, and they see the things around them, the bad things happening and all this kind of stuff. But we have to tell them there is still what? There is still hope. Because Christ has not given up on them. That's why he's going to save so many people during tribulation time. There is still hope even in the worst of times, okay? But for us today, the news media, everything else brings on and puts out this, this great problems that we're having, this doom and gloom. Why? That's what sells newspapers. That's what puts, you know, puts you know, people watching news to see the doom and gloom. They want to see the shootings and the stabbings and all this kind of stuff. If you put on a, I think a news guy said, Everything is great. There's 10, ten people got saved in the First Baptist Church camp this week. Everybody said, oh, change the channel. That's us. We have to be different. Okay? We have to be different. And show them that there is hope on, you, on this thing. You know, for us and the old people, you know, I'm not quite as old as David, don't think. Anyway, uh, <laughs> for, for, for us old people, our hope is what? We're just about done. We're just about done. It's the destination. Yeah, that's right. So our hope is the destination and who controls the destination. Tell us to look up. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Be nice be nice to look up instead of down for change. Hold on a minute. Miss Kim. Uh, going back a little bit to this uh, tribulation thing. Uh-huh. They are they have been martyred. Why are they crying out how long? Because they're like I think I think they're still like all the other things. They want the end of this. They want the end of these things. You know, that type of deal. Now, will they not? They understand that they've got people still there, whatever it may be. They're just crying out to God, you know, the end of these things. They how do not have... How long will they be Yes, there? how long before they get their glorified bodies? How long are they going to be under the altar? Okay? Under the blood, if you will. Okay. It talks about, remember, this, the, if you look back to the sacrifices that are done in the, on the altar and all, much of the blood of the, the sacrificial lamb is placed on the altar themselves. They're under this altar with blood on, on the altar for them and for the people that are lost. And they're asking God, how much longer are we under here? How much longer till we get our glorified body and get to be part of the eternal kingdom? Okay? Yes, ma'am. Now, why? God's good. Jesus saves. Good whatever you said. <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions? Come in. Yes, there are.
Yes. seven spirits type deal. We know we know that the only part of the Holy Spirit and we know is as we do of saving people. When the, when the church is raptured out of here, the church's function, primary function, one is to is to is to witness for God and bring people to pay, bring people to Christ. But their function is baptism. That's the function of the of the church itself. During those things. When the rapture of the church goes out, baptism per se, that part of of Christianity goes away. There is no more baptism at that point in time. They, the Holy Spirit is still here saving them, and they will be saved, and but they will not be baptized. Does, what is baptism? Do, baptizing for here locally, or in the in the eye of the public? What does it do? Absolutely nothing for their salvation. None whatsoever. I'll have to look up the you know the thing of you know type deal whatever but I, I, I don't know off the top of my head exactly where that is and I'll try to get it to you okay but you know that part of the Holy Spirit is still here and it says in Scripture the only part of the Holy Spirit that is taken out of here is that restraining part of the Holy Spirit only thing is holding back Satan right now only thing is holding back the the four horsemen right now and the seal of judgment starting off is restraining power of the Holy Spirit you and I pray. You and I pray to the Holy Spirit to be held back, to hold, hold back, have a, have a, have a, how much, how much evil can be in this world. Once that Holy Spirit, trained part of the Holy Spirit goes out, then it allows Satan to do will as he wills. He is no longer restrained of what he can do. Okay, he can bring all these bad things to on the on the earth. He can bring so many bad things during this fast seven year period, and Satan knows that. Satan knows, he knows scripture better than me and you ever thought about knowing them. He knows when these things are happening, he has seven years to do one thing, and that's to defeat the Israelites. To defeat them. If he can defeat all the Israelites and kill every, every Jew there is alive, then therefore the tribulation time will never end. Why? Because, because the Jews, the Christ, that remnant of Jews, must fall down and be saved and pray that the Holy Spirit, that the Christ will come back the second time. When they fall down and accept Christ as the Messiah and pray to God, you know, deal, they will be saved. From that point in time, oh Lord, we're way over here about six, or eight chapters. From that point in time, every Jew born will be saved. <coughs> and we talked about before. They have once people are born during tribulation time. The Jews and Gentiles, they will be born. Why? Because you have men and women, men and actual people, men and women during this seven-year period, they will get married and have kids. Okay? The people that go into tribulation time, every one of them will be saved going into tribulation time. Jew and Gentile. Everyone. The goat and sheep judgment happens prior to tribulation time, and all the, the goat judge goat basically of the uh, of Gentile is, is sent to purgatory or sent to hell because they're lost. So everybody, Jew and Gentile going in, in tribulation time will be saved. During this seven year period, they will have kids. Okay? They will have kids during these things. They will still do that. All the people, whoa. How many recognize what I just said? Okay, that is untrue. That is untrue. Those things, the millennium kingdom, the thousand year reign, okay? The thousand year end of the tribulation time when judgment is brought on the world. That's when all the golden sheep judgments go. At the end of tribulation time, when God comes back and rules and reigns, does away with tribulation, does away the battle of Armageddon, on and on and on, everybody from that point in time going into the thousand year reign is saved at that point in time. Okay? Jew and Gentile. They are going to this thousand year reign of millennium time, thousand years. They will get married and have kids. All those kids that are born during this thousand year reign, they will have 100 years to be saved. During this 100 years, every Jew that's born to a Jewish couple, God deal, will be saved. God says that, okay? Every 
Gentile will have the hundred years. If he is saved during that first hundred years, he will remain alive forever. Okay? At the end of tribulation time. Holy go, mo, ho. Good thing y'all are not in a big rush. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. At the end of the at the end of tribulation time, okay? All the people that, that go and come out of tribulation, they have the judgment here, Armageddon. It's going to kill all of those in the end of tribulation and judgment coming from Christ at the end of tribulation time. There, therefore, everybody going into here will be saved. Okay? This, at this point in time right here, is the, this is where the Old Testament saints are, are raised, the tribulation saints are raised. Okay? This is the last part of the first tribulation. This is the last part of the saint of Christian people ever being raised. Because once they're born over here, once they go in here, they're saved. Okay? They're still alive, but they're saved. Okay? Once they go in here, they got a thousand years to live in, in millennium time. All those people that are born that are saved during this thousand years will continue to live. They will live for one thousand years. In 1,000 years, they're going to the eternal order, okay? For those people that are born during this 1,000-year reign over here, if they're saved, they go through here and go to here. If they're lost, at 100 years, they will be judged and sent to hell. Because they've, sued, they've, they've sealed their judgment. They have, they have 100 years to be saved. If they don't be saved, then they will die 100 years be over with, okay? All those that are saved, maybe a person gets, gets saved at year 99, 364 days. Guess what? He lives forever. Why? Because there's no more, no more resurrection of saved people. It's done. It's over with, okay? But there is still resurrection of lost people. That's why these people that are lost and go to hell here, Haiti, Sheol, wherever you want to say they come back at the end of this right here to a thing we call the white throne judgment. White throne judgment is when all the lost people are brought back. God says, depart from me because I never knew you. They're thrown in the lake of fire. That's the lost. So their, their resurrection time, all the bodies of all those people that died this lost, they're still waiting. We're out here somewhere. They're still waiting to be judged. Some, who knows how long from now. You know, thousand, thousand seven years plus. Okay? Thousand seven years plus. You're getting a synopsis of the last, what is this, a six or 22, 18 chapters of Revelation. All right here, okay? We'll explain this more as we get through that, as we go through it in each little section, and you'll know the things that's going to happen. Things that's going to happen, one, in the tribulation time, the first three and a half years, the second three and a half years, the 75-day interval, the thousand-year reign, the aftermath period, and eternal order. You can get all of that. If you look at your little handout, you can see the many multitude of things that's going to happen in this, in this time frame right here, in this time frame. God does some miraculous things. But God brings some great judgments on the earth. Where so much of the earth is going to perish because of the judgment God brings them. Two-thirds of the world's population is going to die. Okay? On and on and on. Okay? And we know that. Five revelations. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand, helping us to know, Father, that you are in control. Father, by us accepting you as master of our life and king of our lives, Father, that we'll never see this. We'll never be judged. We as Christians will be raptured out of here prior to the tribulation time if you bring rapture prior to our death, our, our physical death. Father, if it's not our physical death, we're already with you. Then the next generation will be raised up in the rapture. But God, we know what, whenever it is, we still spend eternity with you. Father, help us to understand this so that we can witness and have a fervent witness of those around us that do not know you. So that 
they will receive what they're facing. God, because they, in their lost situation, have no hope. Because you're the only hope there is for eternal salvation and eternal life. Bless, keep it, guide us, Lord, and help us to always look to you. Help us always to lift those people that we that we know that are lost up to you, Father, that, that you may have a drawing bringing them to salvation. And you and you alone can save them. And we ask you to do all these things by the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Let's keep in God's, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. See you next week. Chapter 7.